Remnant 2's first DLC, The Awakened King, introduces players to a new archetype, the Ritualist. It's a dynamic class that, when built correctly, can absolutely melt through enemies and bosses alike. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're burning, bleeding, and blasting our enemies with status effects and breaking down an insane build I call the Vile Wrecker. The Vile Wrecker takes the best aspects of the new archetype, the Ritualist, and augments it with some of the powerful buffs of another secret class, the Engineer. Of course, if you don't know how to unlock the Ritualist, we already have you covered with a video on the channel, so check that out. The Vile Wrecker gameplay is fast and furious, and the more aggressive you are, the more you can sow chaos amongst enemy ranks. The goal is simple, to spread as many status effects on as many enemies as you can before popping them with Eruption, one of the new Ritualist skills. Most of the time you'll kill enemies before that because your weapons also synergize with the build, but in tandem with the skills, it lights out. We'll dive into the playstyle a bit later on in the video, but for now, let's build out the Vile Wrecker. This is a range-centric build, and as such, we'll be focused on our long gun and handgun, both of which play a pivotal role in the complete chaos we want to rain down on our enemies. For the long gun, you'll want to pick up the brand new Sparkfire Shotgun, an honest-to-god pillar of this build. Again, if you don't know where to get this new weapon, you can check out the Ritualist video I mentioned earlier, because it is the starting weapon for the class. The key here is that the Sparkfire Shotgun fires off incendiary shells, which apply burning to enemies and deals fire damage over a few seconds. Keep in mind the goal is to apply negative status effects to any and all enemies, and in that regard, we can do better. For a weapon mod, you have a little flexibility here depending on how much you want to rely on your primary weapon versus your secondary weapon. But I choose the new Creeping Mist mod, which gives you the ability to shoot out a canister of Creeping Mist in a large AoE. Enemies within the mist take an additional 25% status effect damage and are 5% more likely to be struck with a critical hit. To unlock the Creeping Mist weapon, you'll need to defeat the new Sunken Witch boss within the new Sunken Haunt map. If you're just jumping into the DLC, you're guaranteed to get this map on your first playthrough as part of the developer's one-shot adventure mode mechanic, so just be sure to explore each zone so you don't miss out on some loot. As far as the Mutator is concerned, I'm reaching way back and applying Twisting Wounds, which players can obtain from Gore, one of the aberrations found in a loathsome injectable. You've most likely already got this mutator, but if not, you can find it randomly on different loathsome maps. The telltale sign that you have this injectable is the giant pit that leads to a small underground sewer area. The mutator increases range damage of this weapon by 20% to all bleeding targets. At plus 10, the mutator also applies bleeding when you hit an enemy's ranged weak spot or get a ranged critical hit considering the fact that the Sparkfire is a shotgun, and yeah, pretty easy to accomplish. So on one weapon, you have Burning, Bleeding, and Damage Amp, but we can take this a step further if we swing over to our handgun. In this case, we're using the Bolt Driver, a secret weapon that you can obtain within Geisha. Here again, we've got a great video breaking down exactly how to get this, and a ton of other secrets in Geisha as well. The gun itself fires a three-shot burst, but if we amplify that with a weapon mod and mutator, we can lean even more into negative status effects. In this case, we're opting for the Overflow weapon mod, which, when activated, imbues ammunition with shock, which overloads enemies applying another debuff. This weapon mod can be crafted once players find the Escalation Circuit on Nerud. This is rather simple to find, you just need to locate the tower in the main overworld map, and then, off to the left side, drop down to where the Drazir Replicator is. Take the elevator down to the secret chamber. After following this alternate path, you'll find the Escalation Circuit crafting material, which you can take back to Ava in Ward 13 for your new weapon mod. As far as the mutator goes, we're going to pick up Fetid Wounds, a new item that Dwell sells back in Ward 13. Its base effect increases critical chance of the weapon by 5% per unique status effect on the enemy, capping out at 15%. When at plus 10, the weapon's ranged weak spot and critical hits also apply Corroded. If you do some quick math, that's Burning, Bleeding, Shock, and Corroded across two weapons. In most cases, you won't need to apply all four, that's simply overkill. But when it comes to boss fights and elites, having all four status effects ticking down is where a majority of your damage will come from. I should point out that you could absolutely get away with using Enigma, and honestly, this build elevates it almost to a point pre-nerf. It's insane. But quite frankly, I'm tired of Enigma builds, so we're choosing to focus on something different. With our weapon secured and built out, it's time to talk archetypes. 
Obviously, we're going Ritualist. I think I made that pretty clear at this point. But we're also going to lean hard into the kit, and that starts at the very top with the prime perk, Vile. For each status effect we apply to enemies, they'll take 15% more damage from those effects, plus when they die, they'll spread all status effects to nearby enemies within a large AoE. This becomes essential to thinning out packs of enemies. In terms of our skills, we're taking Eruption, which creates a small explosion and sends out a massive shockwave, dealing damage to all enemies within a large AoE. The radius of the explosion and the damage dealt is increased by 100% for each unique status effect on the target and refreshes the current status effect if the enemy doesn't die. So you see, applying as many status effects as possible is the name of the game here, because the more the enemy is suffering, the more damage we can ultimately do. In terms of our second archetype, we're taking the Engineer, and like I mentioned before, this is another secret archetype within the game, so if you don't know how to unlock the class, check out the video we already have up on the channel. We're choosing the Engineer here for two important reasons. First, it's Damage Perk, Metal Worker, which increases skill damage by 50% and skill critical chance by 10%. Simply put, this further amplifies Eruption by a plus 50% damage increase on top of our augmentations from status effects. Reason number two is for the ability Heavy Weapon Flamethrower, which is just another way to add burning damage into the equation. This comes in handy if you run out of ammo on your primary weapon, or just want to rely more on the Bolt Driver and stay at range. There is slightly more to each archetype, but those are all supplementary to the things we just mentioned, so for the sake of keeping this video relatively short, we're going to forge ahead. Where things get really interesting are with the jewelry pieces, which takes the build from good to insane. For our amulet, we're using the Energized Neck Coil, which increases status effect damage by 25%. Applying a damaging status effect also creates a small explosion for 20% of the status effect's full damage. To unlock the Energized Neck Coil, you'll want to head back into the Labyrinth and the Fractured Ingress Checkpoint. Head up the staircase on the left, clearing out any enemies that get in your way, move past the huge statues, and then turn left to access a small gap in the wall. Crawl underneath, drop down, and follow the path around until you find the Energized Neck Coil. For our rings, we start with the Alumni Ring, which increases all elemental damage by 10%. To unlock this ring, you'll need to defeat the Nightweaver World Boss in Losum. Once you defeat her, rest at the checkpoint right next to the Asylum, and when the world refreshes, you'll see the ring just a few steps away between a few headstones. We'll also want to pick up the new Band of the Fanatic, which increases status effect damage by 25%, but reduces the duration of status effects by 65%. To unlock the Band of the Fanatic, you'll first need to unlock the Ritualist Armor Set. Once you do that, you'll need to enter a new instance of the Awakened King and the Forlorn Coast. Wearing the full set of armor, you can now walk amongst the Dran, listening to the Preacher on the scaffolding. Wait for him to finish his sermon, talk to him, and he'll reward you with the Band of the Fanatic. Next on our list is the Stone of Malevolence. When equipped, elemental damage generates 15% additional mod power. This is absolutely nuts when you consider all of the elemental damage that we're dishing out, and you'll see just how easy it is to chain together mods from moment to moment. This gives us a lot of flexibility in the mod category, so if you don't want to use Creeping Mist, you can absolutely change it out for something else, knowing that it'll have a relatively short cooldown. The Stone of Malevolence is technically a corpse drops within the new Loathsome content, so you should be able to find it randomly on any map. I found mine on the Derelict Lighthouse map. When I zoned in, I turned immediately to the right, and the ring was lying there on a corpse. Finally, we'll equip the good old Firestone, which increases fire damage by 10% and fire resistance by 15. We're double dipping here, increasing the damage from our Spark Fire Shotgun, but also the Flamethrower Turret. Amplifying both sources of primary damage definitely makes an impact, and you'll feel that during combat. This ring can be purchased from Reggie back in Ward 13. In terms of a relic, well, it's really dealer's choice. I've pretty much stuck with the Ripened Heart since I first unlocked it. If you still don't have this relic, I recommend you check out our Secrets of the Red Empress video, which shares the location of the item, as well as a number of other exciting secrets. As far as armor is concerned, again, the choice is really up to you. Personally, I like to maintain a medium encumbrance, which doesn't restrict my ability to move or dodge, but also has some semblance of survivability. Your armor choice really flexes on your playstyle preference and doesn't have a huge bearing on the build, so choose what feels best to you. As we step into traits, keep in mind that the trait cap has been increased to 85, which should make for building out any character a little less stressful. That being said, we're still limited to a degree, and that's okay, because once again, there's some flexibility here. Traits that we want to max out with 10 points are Affliction, which you'll get passively because of the Ritualist archetype, Fortify, which you'll get passively because of the Engineer archetype, 
Long Shot, which increases your weapon range by 600 centimeters, Spirit, which increases mod power generation by 20%, Expertise, which reduces skill cooldowns by 20%, Amplitude, which increases AoE size by 50%, Bark Skin, which reduces all incoming damage by 10%, and Siphoner, which grants 3% base lifesteal. The rest of the traits I take all have five skill points allocated into them and could easily be reallocated based on your personal playstyle. Swiftness to increase all movement speed by 6%, Untouchable to increase the evade window by 15%, Endurance to increase maximum stamina by 15 Handling to reduce weapon spread and recoil by 20%, Fitness to increase evade distance by 15%, and Footwork which increases movement speed while aiming by 25%. In practice, the Vile Wrecker is one of the most fun builds I've messed around with in the game. It's rare to have something so fun be so good, but that's what we're dealing with here. When clearing trash mobs, you might find that the Spark Fire Shotgun is all you need, because for the most part, the way we've amplified the damage makes it possible to clear most lesser enemies with ease. But let's pretend for a moment we're fighting elite enemies on the most challenging difficulty. First thing you should do is drop your turret. That'll keep up the burning debuff and deal some decent damage. Once it's deployed, start with your long gun, the spark fire, and land a weak spot hit on the enemy. This will apply or refresh burning and also bleeding thanks to our weapon mod. Switch over to your handgun and land another weak shot hit to apply corrosive. If you have the mod power, you can activate overflow. Land any hit and you'll have successfully applied all four debuffs. This is when we use eruption for a massive amount of damage. Remember, you're dealing plus 450% more damage thanks to the interactions the skill has with the debuffs, plus the buff we get from the Engineer Archetype. Keep those debuffs on the enemy for maximum damage, pop eruption whenever it's off cooldown, and you have all of those debuffs applied, and I promise you, most elites won't be alive long enough to be much of a threat. Boss encounters aren't much different. Make sure your turret is down, apply your debuffs, and then pop eruption whenever you have everything taken down. It's not the end of the world if you use the skill with 3 debuffs active instead of 4, but you're missing out on plus 100% skill damage for each debuff you miss, so try and manage that effectively. With any shotgun weapon, you'll most likely run into an ammo issue, so always be on the lookout for red ammo packs and always pick them up. If you're playing co-op, it's okay to be a little greedy here because the ammo reserve for the gun isn't great, and since you're dealing so much damage, it's okay to take an extra pack or two. Bottom line, if you build out a Ritualist like I just shared, you're going to have an awesome time with this class. It's dynamic, explosive, and the damage you're able to output is actually insane. If you test out the build, be sure to come back and let me know what you think in the comments. If you know of a way to make the Vile Wrecker even stronger, drop us a line and let's see if we can take this thing to that next level. Of course, if you did like the build guide, you know what to do. Hit the thumbs up, consider subscribing, because we've got more Remnant 2 content coming your way. We can't wait to share it all with you. You can also join us on Discord if you want to hang out with the team, talk about great games, and enter for your chance to win tons of free prizes. That link, as always, is below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.